I thought I'd make a video about something so simple that you wouldn't expect anyone to be able to talk about it for more than 10 seconds. But you'll see, by the end of this more than 10 seconds long video, we will cover things like satellite orbits, matrix determinants, t-shirts, and mathematical logic. And we will even invent a brand new arithmetic operator. Sometimes even the simplest topics can have far-reaching consequences. What I want to talk about, plain and simple, is subtraction. You know, five apples take away two, three left. In this video, I want to look at it from the opposite side. The most annoying property of subtraction is that it isn't commutative. You see, when you swap the inputs of a sum, the result stays the same. The plus operator doesn't care in which order it takes its inputs. For the minus operator, this is no longer true. When you swap the order of the inputs, the result becomes the exact opposite of what it was before. This is called anti-commutativity, and it causes immense suffering and grinding of teeth, because if you get this wrong, you introduce an incorrect minus sign in your calculations. Also, it's just so ugly and asymmetric. We can deal with this problem in two ways. The first is rather drastic. Let's get rid of subtraction altogether. No more anti-commutativity, no more grinding of teeth. The second approach is to fully embrace anti-commutativity. We should realize that it's actually amazing and that we can make grateful use of its advantages. Let's do the drastic thing first. Getting rid of subtraction is actually easier than it sounds. You see, subtraction acts like a binary operation. It has two inputs, one on the left, the other on the right. But when you dig deeper, you will see that subtraction is defined like this. A minus B is actually, really, just A plus the negative of B. This minus sign is a unary operator. It takes only a single input to its right. And all it does is flip the sign of that input. The binary operator is now just a good old plus symbol. So, we have restored commutativity. The only thing you have to remember is to move the minus sign around with the number. It's basically attached to that number. One downside of going from binary minus to unary sign flip is that we need more parentheses. If you don't like that, here's a cool notational trick. You can put the minus sign on top of the number. You no longer need parentheses. The expression becomes a lot simpler. It is now totally obvious that you can swap the order of the inputs. The horizontal bar at the top feels like it's even more strongly attached to the number than before. In case you think I'm just making up new notation here, this is actually how things are often done in mathematical logic. The opposite of a logical statement is given by its negation. The sky is blue becomes the sky is not blue. True becomes false and vice versa. This logical negation is written with a horizontal bar above the statement. That leads to logical formulas like this one. The opposite of the opposite is the original, just as it is for numbers. In the world of logic, binary subtraction would look like this. Instead of a plus the negative of b, you would get a or the logical negation of b. The OR operator is the logical equivalent of addition. And so this expression is the logical equivalent of subtraction, but without the need for parentheses. Logicians even have a shortcut notation for it. They write it with a double arrow, and they read it as IF B, THEN A. The arrow is meant to evoke the feeling that whenever you find yourself at B, you can safely proceed to A. In a mathematical proof, this means that you can derive A from B. Be careful though. This arrow does not allow you to go back. It only works in one direction. You can prove A from B, but not B from A. 
That's because the if-then operation is anti-symmetric, just like subtraction itself. But unlike subtraction, the arrow actually has a really cool feature. The symbol itself is asymmetric. So not only is the if-then operation anti-commutative, we write it in a way that represents this lack of commutativity explicitly in the symbol. I am a sucker for good notation, because the right choice of symbols and names can help you a lot when doing complicated calculations. Here's an example. 2 is less than 5. I hope you agree. This operator is not commutative, because when I swap the two numbers, we now get something that I hope you disagree with. But if I now flip the symbol around its vertical axis, the statement becomes true again. In fact, it's exactly the same statement as before, just written right to left. This is what makes the less than symbol so perfect. The symbol is asymmetric to reflect the fact that the less than relation itself is anti-symmetric. This kind of notation makes your life a lot easier. Just flip an entire expression around and it keeps the same value. Uh, there, that looks better. Here's a second example. 2 plus 5 equals 7. Again, I hope you agree. This time, when we swap the inputs, the resulting sum is still 7. Addition is commutative. And the symbol, the plus sign, also happens to be symmetric around its vertical axis. So once again, you can flip the entire expression around, including the plus symbol, and it keeps its original value. So basically, as a sucker for good notation, I want commutative operations to have symmetric symbols, and I want anti-commutative operations to have asymmetric symbols. The if-then arrow does this perfectly. Flip the entire statement around, and you get a completely equivalent statement, just written in the opposite direction. But the binary minus sign, well... Let's just say that this is something the logic people got right, but the arithmetic people didn't. Historically, we've been using a symmetric symbol for subtraction. Maybe that's where some of the confusion and teeth grinding comes from. And that brings me to the second approach to making subtraction less annoying, or at least less confusing. This is an unconventional approach, so please bear with me. The idea is that we give subtraction a new symbol, an asymmetric one, so that everyone can clearly see that the operation is anti-commutative. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that we change all the math textbooks in the world. I know that's not going to happen. I just want you to see for yourself what this simple change in notation will do for your understanding and appreciation of anti-commutativity. We have many possible options, so many asymmetric symbols to choose from. But I would argue that there is an obviously superior candidate. I propose that we replace the binary minus symbol by an arrow. It can run from left to right or from right to left. Both of these expressions mean the same thing. They both mean a minus b. But you can also read them as from b to a. When you flip the expression around, the arrow flips around too, and the value of the expression is unchanged. So, instead of getting rid of subtraction, we just acknowledge that it behaves differently, and we make that fact more explicit and visible in the notation. Sure, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but it has many advantages. First, there's the fact that this creates another nice connection between logic and arithmetic. Just look at those two arrows side by side. Nice. By the way, there are many more of these connections. The Canadian computer scientist Eric Hainer created a beautiful unified framework in which numbers and logical statements are placed on an equal footing. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video about that someday. But the main reason why this arrow is perfect is that it gives us a geometric representation for what happens when we perform subtraction. 
This complements the algebraic definition of subtraction I gave earlier. Let's begin with a simple one-dimensional number line. 5 minus 2 is 3, which is the same as saying that going from 2 to 5 requires 3 steps to the right. Likewise, going from 1 to negative 4 requires 5 steps to the left. Negative numbers point left, positive ones point right. That probably don't impress you much. But now watch what happens when we apply this crazy idea to higher dimensional vectors. The subtraction of vectors is really cumbersome. a minus b is still actually really just defined as a plus the negative of b. So we have to go through all the trouble of flipping b over, then putting it head to tail after a, and then following both arrows to finally obtain the result. Instead, what we can do is just walk from b to a. That's all. You can verify that this gives you exactly the same result, but in a much more intuitive way. This is where our new arrow operator really shines. It tells you exactly what happens. You walk from b to a. And if you flip the expression around, you still walk from b to a. This makes reasoning about vector subtraction a lot more natural. Vector subtraction is a key ingredient of calculus, because it allows us to calculate derivatives. Say you have a satellite orbiting the Earth. You want to know how fast it's going at a specific point. So you first pick an origin, let's say all the way down here. Then you draw position vectors. Those are vectors from the origin to the position of the satellite. A short time later, the satellite has moved further along its orbit. So the new position vector is over here. The next step is to make the difference of these two vectors. Instead of flipping and doing the head to tail thingy, we can just draw an arrow from the first position to the second one. This is totally natural. As we shrink the time interval and bring the position vectors ever closer together, it's visually obvious that their difference is going to run along the trajectory. I mean, if you walk from one position to the next, you do so by walking on the orbit, right? So the fact that the velocity vector becomes more and more tangent to the curve is no longer surprising, but actually really intuitive. Okay. One more thing about this satellite orbit. Let's move the origin all the way to the other side of the screen. The position vectors change. They are now totally different vectors than they were before. So every time you decide to change your frame of reference, your perspective, your origin, you have to recalculate all your position vectors. But keep your eyes on the difference vector. It stays the same. It couldn't care less about you dragging your origin all over the place. The secret behind its indifference is anti-commutativity. You see, when you change the origin, both position vectors change by the same amount. But one of them has a minus sign on it, and the other has a plus sign. So their contributions to the total change cancel out exactly. The net change ends up being zero. So instead of being weird or annoying, anti-commutativity is actually amazing. It manages to make things invariant under changes in their environment. Velocity vectors are invariant to your choice of perspective. This makes them very robust. I sometimes think that maybe this is why velocities are more central to modern physics than positions are. Anyway, math is full of anti-commutative things. There's the wedge product between two vectors, which gives you a small piece of flat area. The area is signed, so when you swap the order of the two vectors, the area becomes negative. This gives us a handle on things like magnetic fields. When you change the direction of a current in a wire, the magnetic field flips around and picks up a different sign. 
the area of such a wedge product is given by a determinant. And hey, when you swap two columns of a matrix, the determinant changes its sign. So this is yet another example of anti-commutativity. Calculating determinants is notoriously tricky because you have to get all the minus signs just right. But the upside is that all these minus signs make determinants invariant under many important transformations. The determinant of a matrix is invariant under similarity transformations, for instance. We can extend this idea even further. Remember that division is actually, really, truly defined as A times the inverse of B. We are dealing with multiplication rather than addition here, so this is the multiplicative inverse. Note that fractions are completely indifferent to you changing your scale, because you change it by the same factor at the top and the bottom. And those two factors cancel each other out, because one of them has an inverse on it, while the other doesn't. This is completely analogous to the position vectors earlier, only this time with multiplication instead of addition. So you see that the invariance of anti-symmetric things carries very far throughout math and physics. I am wearing a yellow t-shirt. I would like to wear the green one instead. First, I have to take off the yellow shirt. We do that by putting a minus sign on yellow, because minus means remove, reduce, go away, get rid of it. Next, I have to put on the green shirt. We do that with a plus sign, because plus means add, inject, augment, give it to me. We end up with green minus yellow. But isn't it much more natural to say that we just went from yellow to green? We leave the initial position by minusing it. And we arrive at the new position by plussing it. That's how we get there. This is a new perspective, a different way of looking at the situation. And it gives us new intuitions. Thinking about the properties of mathematical operators, and even about the symbols we use to represent them, can teach us a lot about something as trivially simple as subtraction. The goal of the All Angles channel is to look at math from different perspectives. We have many more videos about the surprising connections between algebra and geometry. If you don't want to miss new content, consider subscribing. I hope you will like and share this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions we can answer for you. And hey, if you want to support us financially, you can create an account on Patreon, where new videos are always published well in advance. Thanks for your support and for your time, and I hope to see you again later.